big news today. Big news. Not that it's a shocker to everybody, but it's still, you know, big news. Bronny James, the son of the great LeBron James, is entering the NBA draft. Now, he's entering the draft, Rob, but he also is entering the NCAA portal. So he's keeping his eligibility to still play in college. So the the plan is that uh, they will you know, have workouts and interviews with various NBA teams. And depending on if any of them, you know, what they say about Bronny, do they want him on their team? Would they draft him? And Rob, do they have any type of developmental plan where they would put him through that would help him become a better player, a better NBA type player? Uh, And if they don't get the answers, they like they want, then apparent looks like he will remain in college, transfer to some other school, but play another year at least in college. So I'm going to say this. When I first heard it, Rob, this morning, I was like, what? And again, we all knew there was a possibility. You remember, I said, I, I Brownie, still think that he's going to You still thought I, he was going to do I it. I said that. And, and, I, did, right. I still think he's going to wind up in the NBA with LeBron. Yeah, With the Lakers. Very, I'm very serious, possible. Chris. That's no, I, I, I think the Lakers I will. I think the Lakers will draft him if he stays in the draft, and yep. LeBron wants to stay there, and they draft him. But I thought he's not ready. From what we saw at USC, average what four or five points, didn't start. The team wasn't very good, and I thought I know LeBron's got the pull to get him in. But I don't. I'm not sure this is best for Bronny. But you know what? I'm but gonna... when I looked at the further plan, as I just explained, like he's still, he's just gonna see are our teams willing to develop him, and could he improve more in the NBA with a team working with him than he could in college? You're gonna at least look at it and be interviewed and see what teams think. Then I started to feel better about it. So I look, LeBron and his. You know, his guys, Rich Paul, Maverick Carter, Randy Mims, they've been very smart about uh, the things throughout LeBron's career, obviously. And to me now, Rob, this is another smart move. If he declares, I mean, I guess that would mean a team is willing to really work with him and see if he can improve. But um, I think it's a good move because it it gives you options. And um, I I, I like it more when I heard the full plan. I, I, I think it's... I've always been. I think that it's the only move for Bronny. Really? Uh, yeah. And and from from this standpoint, Chris. Unfortunately, he had you know the cardiac arrest, and he right. was able to get back on the court and play. And he didn't have, he didn't play well. Anybody else with four points in college, you, you no, know, we wouldn't be talking about this, okay? Right. But he can't afford to go back to college and not play well. Like I like I I don't. So he has a built-in excuse of why maybe Chris he wasn't as good as maybe people thought he it, was. Which I think there is legitimacy. No, it to could that, be, Rob. but uh, but right? I'm just saying he missed a lot of months. But would you so, agree? Like yeah. like you could oh, use yeah. that as a reason why you can't use that if he goes back for a second year and averages four or five points in college, right? Okay. If he's healthy. Okay. So I don't think you want. I'm not so sure they want. Any more Bronny in college stuff? Hey, he, you know, like like this is. I truly believe Chris. He will be with the Lakers next year, like like like, without question. Well, I and think I, that and I there's this, been reports that they would draft him. Yeah, you know I, what I mean. They're gonna like do whatever it, they if, can if to make LeBron, LeBron happy. Right, I, right. I, I, I've said it from jump, and LeBron. Let's be honest. He can't. He can't keep waiting. We talked about it before, Chris. First of all, that that'll be what is this year twenty, and next year will be twenty one. So, say if he waited and Bronny went to college, you're talking about year twenty two. There's also a chance that at his age something could happen. He could get hurt, oh, of course. and then and then he never even gets that chance because Bronny went back went to college for another year, and then LeBron gets hurt, and then he's going to miss a year. I'm just saying, speculating. The like, only only you know, thing I disagree with there, I don't think the priority should be 
that LeBron and Bronny played. No, I agree. I agree with that. I think it should be what's best for Bronny. I agree. And you you make a good point. Now, here's the the counter-argument to that. If he goes back next year and doesn't play well, say he averages nine points, you know, he's okay. He starts, you know, on a mediocre team. He's fine, but not certainly not looking like an NBA prospect. Right. LeBron, now you're right, I guess if LeBron got hurt, but you would think LeBron and, of course, he's combined with Rich Paul, who's one of the most powerful agents in the league, they still could probably get Bronny drafted. Yeah, I'm, Would you I'm, agree with that? I'm not saying that it's impossible, but the scrutiny, and then it would be like, oh, he's a charity case. He well, that's going to be there. You don't nah, think that's going to be there this, this nah, year? No, because I think he has the, the – what you said, some of it is legit about him being – uh, you know, the the cardiac arrest and missing time. Like you could use But that. it wasn't he wasn't a definite I, I know NBA I, prospect. I, I, I like get you. you know what I mean? Any I see but, I but a I second think, bad year or sub no, year. I, then it's I all agree. Like, it would it would make it look worse. There's right. no doubt. That's all. There's That's no all I'm saying. It would look like, oh wow, okay, this is right. Just, they're just but, doing this for LeBron for LeBron and he's not even he shouldn't even be in the league. Like But that, see I do think that that there's going to be some sentiment of that anyway. Oh, yeah. Like, no. let's say you're right. He goes to the Lakers this year. Oh, this people are going to be, be kind and people are going to be respectful because of LeBron, at least publicly. But players in the league, there's no doubt. maybe in the locker room, if he's taking the guys. Because here's the thing: if LeBron can get him drafted, I, I can he get him minutes? Now, I don't think, you know, I would assume LeBron, he's not playing much if he's on the Lakers next year. You would assume because I not. think I think the plan would be when he's practicing, like, because LeBron said it on his podcast with J.J. Redick, he questioned how much the college game prepares you for the NBA game today. So I think that's part of thinking, too, is Bronny's not really going to get prepared in college, so let's get him in the NBA, get him working with the coaches, learning what he needs to learn. And I think that would be what would happen, Rob, if he plays with the Lakers. I don't think you'd see him much in the games. But if you did see him in the games, I just think there's always that possibility that guys are going to think, Rob, oh, he he's just here because of his dad. Remember what Austin Rivers said that was the case with him, right. with Doc Rivers. No, it's just it's a tough spot to be in. You know that. And and we see it. We've seen it in our business. You know what I mean. There's guys, and then you got to make your own way, uh, Chris, and and be your own dog. You know what I mean. As far as uh, play by play guys, mostly you see a lot. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Well, play by play guys are right. A, you know what a I mean. That's different like, from what yeah. I'm about to say because you're right. I mean nepotism, and you could classify this as some of some form of that. Is rampant, Rob. You know, in the sports industry, how many? I mean, we talked about Bill Belichick's son, uh, who was the the coach for the Chiefs, Todd Haley, like played who, who golf, played golf like, in college, never even like, played football. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're guys. Last night, the Nuggets and, Andy, with Mo- Andy Reed's, Mike Malone, Andy Reid's kids. Yeah, with yeah. The, Andy Reid. Michael boys. Malone got ejected last night from the Nuggets game, and and the assistant who replaced him was. Um, his dad was a coach, like Adelman. It was David Adelman, Are you Rick serious? Adelman's son. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. of course, Malone. And Mike father, Malone is I'm, Brendan Malone, right? Yeah, Brendan Malone dad. with the Pistons, right? It's all over the league. This is the one thing I would say though that makes it a little different because some have said, "Hey, especially as an African American, yo, white people been using this nepotism all throughout American history to get their kids into these great jobs and things like that." I'm not going to be mad at a brother for doing it, which I'm I'm with that. But the difference is your average person in the corporate world, Rob, who gets the nepotism, no everybody's not seeing his performance. 100% every time, it's, totally, right? it's totally different, right? Yeah, like if you're a player and it's nepotism, I mean they're going to see. But we oh, talked wow, but, we, but we talked play. about this with Urban Meyer and uh T Tebow, you remember that, like when he tried to get Tebow yep. on the team, yep. and and you got to remember, Chris, the the problem with that is you're taking some other player's job, right. and the players know and his money. The players know who belongs and who doesn't. You know what I mean? Right. Like like oh he oh he's a coach or a GM or in the front office, but this dude can't play. 
Like we're watching. Right. Like we know he can't. He don't deserve a spot on the team. That's the different part. 